Okay, here's another example of one of those two-sided thermochemistry problems where you have one thing giving up energy, in this case a burning heap of sugar, and something else absorbing that energy, in this case the water that the sugar is sitting next to. And we'll see if we can answer some questions about that. Here they say we have 2.19 kilograms of water, and it heats up by a given amount, and we know it's water, so we know it's specific heat, so it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to figure out how much energy it absorbed. Its temperature changed, so the energy transfer is going to be given by mc delta t. The mass of the water is 2.19 kilograms. Now, I've done a lot of these examples working in grams, and I do like working in grams in chem, but I'll do this one in kilograms just to show that it's possible. Mass is 2.19 kilograms. There we go. The specific heat for water is 4.19. And this time, instead of doing joules per gram degree Celsius, I'm going to work in kilo, sorry, kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the temperature change, uh, they didn't give it to us, but we can work it out. It's what, 4.51 degrees? Subtract these and you get just over 4.5 degrees. And if we multiply all that out, 2.19 times 4.19 times 4.51, we get 41.384211. And if our kilograms cancelled and our degrees cancelled, then yeah, this value should come out in kilojoules. So that's the energy absorbed by the water. And from that, they want us to get the molar heat of combustion for sucrose, meaning there was a reaction where the sugar burned, and the energy given by any reaction, including burning, is given by N delta H. They want the delta H, the kilojoules per mole that you get when you burn sucrose. Well, we know the total energy. We just found it. It's 41.38, etc. 3, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 kilojoules equals moles of sucrose. Uh-oh, don't have it. We're going to have to find the moles of sucrose. And to find that, we need the molar mass for sucrose. And I don't have that at hand either, so we have a little work to do before we can carry on. We need the molar mass for sucrose, which is C12H22O11. Fairly big molecule. 12 carbons means 12 times 12.01. 22 hydrogens is 22 times 1.01. .01. And 11 oxygens is 11 times 16 for a grand total of uh, plus 22.22 .22 plus 11 times 16 would be 176 342.34 grams per mole is the molar mass for sucrose the number of moles for anything is mass divided by molar mass so the number of moles here would be 2.5 grams divided by 342.34. This is not going to be much. I get 0 0.0073026822 moles of sucrose. That number is our N over here. It's how much sucrose burned. 0 0.00730268 times a delta H that we don't know but that we want to find. Well, how do we get it? If we want to isolate delta H, we divide both sides by this point 007. So 41.384 211 divided by 0 0.007302682, was it? And I get that the delta H 
is 5,666.987, give or take, kilojoules per mole. I know there's been at least one example where I forgot to put the per mole here and I just said kilojoules, which is not good. It should always be kilojoules per mole when you're talking about a molar heat of combustion. And it should be per mole. Be specific. Every so often this will save you from a mistake. Per mole of what? In this case, sucrose. Okay. A couple of things we need to do to finish this answer. Can you think what they are? One would be significant digits. Several of our givens only had three significant digits, so this has to cut, be cut down to only three. Um, one option would be you could say 500 and, or sorry, 5.67 megajoules. 5.67 megajoules. The other option is you could go to scientific notation and say 5.67 times 10 to the 3 kilojoules. And the other thing that's missing from these is a very small detail out front. You see where I'm going with this? This reaction should have a negative delta H because fire is hot. This reaction heated up water, therefore it is exothermic. Therefore it should have a negative delta H. So there's the molar heat of combustion for sucrose. And the last part is not a lot to do with thermochemistry. Well, maybe a little. A thermochemical equation for the combustion reaction. Well, first of all, forget the thermo part. If they just said write an equation for the combustion reaction of sucrose, what would you do? You got all combustions look the same. They're all some burnable hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen and the products are carbon dioxide and steam and now we have to get this balanced we have 12 carbons on the left we must have 12 on the right so this there definitely need a dozen carbon dioxides there are 22 hydrogens on the left Therefore, we need 11 steam. Okay, now, how are we doing on oxygen? 12 times 2, there are 24 oxygens right there. And then there are 11 more oxygens here for a grand total of 35 oxygen on the right side. Here are 11 oxygens in the sucrose molecule. We need 24 more to even things up, which means I must have 12O2. That good? Probably old hat. I just thought I'd do this one to make sure everyone's up to speed on balancing these things. So, if they just wanted a chemical equation, we would be done right here. But they want a thermochemical equation, and that means we must include the heat also. There are two ways that you can do that. One of them is to write the heat in just like it's another chemical we can say this reaction produces CO2 and steam and 5.67 megajoules. I put the energy on the right hand side because it's yet another thing the reaction produces. If it were endothermic, if it consumed energy, that energy would go on the left as a an ingredient, but instead it's another thing the reaction makes. So you can write the delta H in line like this, or your other option, if you don't like them in line, I kind of use both of these, they're both okay. The other option you can have is write the, th the chemical equation and then separately write delta H equals minus 5.67 megajoules right next to the reaction. Either one of those is fine.